we've seen how we can derive the deadweight loss from a distortionary tax in the consumer diagram, where that deadweight loss is the difference between the actual tax revenue we raise using the distortionary tax and how much we could have raised in a lump sum way without distorting prices and made the consumer no worse off than she is under the distortionary tax. We now want to ask how would we actually calculate such a deadweight loss for a consumer? How could we use the math tools we've developed so far to accomplish that? So let's do a simple example to illustrate how those math tools connect with what we're seeing in the graphs. Suppose we had a consumer whose indifference map can be represented by this utility function, x1 times x2, where x2 is just dollars of other consumption, a composite good that has a price of just one. Suppose that consumer had an income of 2000 and the initial price of good one is also equal to one. Then we're going to impose a per unit tax of one. So every unit of X that is being bought is going to be taxed at one, raising the price of that good from one to two. So first let's start with the graph. We start with the initial budget constraint. That budget constraint is going to have a slope of minus one, one divided by one. It's got an intercept of 2,000 on the vertical axis because your income is 2,000. Then we impose the tax. When we impose the tax, we raise the price of good one from one to one plus one or two. So now we get a new budget constraint that has twice the slope. So this new budget constraint is the after tax budget constraint and it now has a slope of minus two. In order for us to know how much of a tax this consumer will pay, we have to know what the consumer does after the tax is imposed. So we have to know where her utility maximizing consumption bundle lies. Where is her indifference curve tangent to this after tax budget? And that gives us her after tax consumption bundle. So the first step in linking the math to the graph is to figure out what that bundle is. But we know how to do that. We simply do a utility maximization problem. The consumer, after facing the tax, is saying, I want to maximize my utility, which is given by x1 times x2, by choosing x1 and x2, subject to my budget constraint. And the budget constraint now is that my income, 2,000, is equal to the price of good 1 times x1, so that's 2 times x1, plus the price of good 2 times x2, but the price of good 2 is just 1, so it's plus x2. We set up our Lagrange function, x1 times x2 plus lambda times 2000 minus 2x1 minus x2. And when we take our first order conditions, so the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x1 is equal to x2 minus 2 times lambda, and that's equal to 0. We do the same with respect to x2, and that gives us x1 minus lambda is equal to zero. We can take the negative terms to the other side, so we get x2 is equal to two times lambda, and x1 is equal to lambda. Divide the two equations by each other, we can cancel the lambdas, so x2 over x1 is equal to two, or x2 is equal to two times x1. Just multiply through by x1. So now we have this, and we have the budget constraint. So we just have to plug this x2 into the budget constraint, and we get that 2x1 plus x2, which is equal to 2x1, is equal to 2,000. So 4 times x1 is equal to 2,000, so x1 is equal to 500, 2,000 divided by 4. And then, of course, x2 
It's just twice that. So the after-tax consumption bundle for the consumer is 500 of X1 and 1000 of X2. Next, we want to ask, can we from that figure out how much of a tax payment she's actually making? And when we did this graphically, we said, that's this vertical distance here. And we could calculate it that way. But there's an even easier way of doing it. We know the consumer is consuming 500 of X1. We know that she's paying $1 tax for every unit she's consuming. So that means 1 times 500 gives us a tax of 500. That's how much she's paying in a tax payment under the distortionary tax. The next thing we have to do is figure out what L is. L is how much we could have taken away from this consumer in cash without changing prices, keeping the initial slope, but making her no worse off than she is after the distortionary tax. So now we need to figure out what's the label on that indifference curve. But we have one point on the indifference curve. We have the point 500x1 and 1000x2 that lies on this magenta indifference curve. So all we need to do is plug in 500 and 1000 into the utility function to figure out what label the utility function is giving to this indifference curve. So plug in 500 and 1000. 500 times 1,000 is 500,000. So this utility function assigns the label of 500,000 to that indifference curve. Now, to figure out the lump sum amount, we want to figure out how much money does this consumer need to reach this indifference curve if she's facing the original prices. So that's our utility or uh, expenditure minimization problem. So we want to figure out what's the minimum spending the consumer has to do by choosing the right bundle of X1 and X2. And the spending is at the original prices because we're not distorting the prices. So the spending would be just X1 plus X2 in this case. Both prices are just equal to 1 initially. So what's the minimum spending we're going to have to do such that we reach this indifference curve, such that x1 times x2 is equal to 500,000? So graphically, we're simply saying, let's take this slope for a budget constraint and fit it to this indifference curve. And the way that we do that is by figuring out what that tangency is. So what's the lowest possible spending, x1 plus x2, that I can do to reach this indifference curve so that my utility is equal to 500,000? If we solve that problem, we'll get that blue point. So we're going to set up our Lagrangian x1 plus x2 plus lambda times the constraint with everything collected to one side, so 500,000 minus x1 times x2. And we know how to solve that, same way we solved it over here. We're just looking for a tangency, which is what the Lagrange method gives us. So we take the partial of the Lagrange with respect to x1, and that gives us 1 minus lambda times x2. That's going to be equal to 0. Same for x2. We get 1 minus lambda x1 is equal to 0. Take the negative terms to the other side, and we get 1 is equal to lambda times x2. And 1 is equal to lambda times x1. Divide the two equations by each other, cancel our lambdas, and we get x2 over x1 is equal to 1, or x2 is equal to x1. Once we know that, we can plug that into this equation up here, into the constraint, just like 
we did over here. Once we got this, we plugged it into the constraint over here. So we know x1 times x2, which is just equal to x1, is equal to 500,000. In other words, x1 squared is equal to 500,000. And now we take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of 500,000, we get 707, roughly, 0.11. And since x2 is equal to x1, we know that x2 is also 707.11. So now we figured out what this point is. It doesn't look like it in my graph, but this is 701, uh, 707 point one one, and this is 707.11. Well, how does that help us figure out what L is? Well, knowing how much you're going to consume on this budget is going to tell us how much spending you need to do once I've taken enough money away from you so you can just reach this indifference curve at the original prices. So how much spending are you doing? Well, your spending is just x1 times the price of good 1, which is just 1, plus x2 times the price of good 2, which is just 1. So it's just those two added together. So my total spending on the blue budget, my spending, is just equal to 707.11 plus 707.11, which is equal to um, 1,414.22. That's how much it costs to reach that magenta indifference curve at the original prices. So how much did we take away from you to make that budget possible for you? Well, you started with 2,000. Now you're only needing to spend 1,414.22 to get to this indifference curve. So the difference between 2000 and this is how much we took away from you in a lump sum payment. That's how much we can take away from you in cash and make you no worse off than you were on, under the distortionary tax. So 2000 minus 1414.22 gives us 585.22. Well, now we can just calculate the dead weight loss as the difference between those two, 